welcome. You're all so welcome. You've got a full house today. And Stevie's actually sitting up. I wonder if Maxie will sit up today. I love you all. I'd like to start differently today, but first I wanted to say the concept of freedom for most people means the freedom to do things, a freedom of action, to become president, to buy a house, to go for a walk without restraint. And most people that adopt this point of view feel they don't have enough freedom. I, on the other hand, think that freedom is the ability to do nothing and to be happy doing nothing. One never feels happier than when they're doing nothing, except for those who think they want to do something. Doing nothing, just relaxing under the chestnut tree or the oak tree in your lawn chair on a cloudy day with a warm wind blowing slightly. The book you've been reading, you put down the milkshake you've been drinking. It's chocolate, by the way. You put down and you just lay back in your chair. And you become yourself. And you find out that self experience is the same everywhere. but it's most prominently felt when nothing occupies your mind, it doesn't weigh on you to do something. You say, hell, I'm going to visit home. And you go home to yourself. What is the self? It's what you are when you're doing nothing, being happy, being without intent, without fear, without anxiety or restlessness. And it's what you begin to feel in that state of relaxation. Emptiness is everywhere. Your body's in it somewhere with its feelings, tensions, which gradually relax and go away. When you become aware of it and you relax them, and then you go swimming in consciousness, self, the emptiness everywhere, the light of consciousness, feeling of deep peace, a kind of wonderment, seeing the magnificence of the totality of what you are. Your consciousness, you can either grasp it as a whole 
like Atlas holding the world on his back. Or you can become it by relaxing into consciousness. And then you become the universe. And how I meant this will start differently is after that brief introduction to invite Jay to read two or three pages from the Ashtavakra Gita. He's coming to an interesting part. Uh, <clears throat> this is titled Awareness. Yesterday, I lived bewildered in illusion. But now I am awake, flawless and serene beyond the world. From my light, the body and the world arise. So all things are mine or nothing is. Now I have given up the body and the world. I have a special gift. I see the infinite self as a wave seething and foaming is only water. So all creation streaming out of the self is only the self. Consider a piece of cloth. It is only threads. So all creation, when you look closely, is only the self. Like the sugar in the juice of the sugar cane, I am the sweetness in everything I have made. When the self is unknown, the world arises, not when it is known. But you mistake the rope for the snake. When you see the rope, the snake vanishes. And the next paragraph is, my nature is light, nothing but light. When the world arises, I alone am shining. When the world arises in me, it is just an illusion. Water shimmering in the sun, a vein of silver in mother of pearl, a serpent in a strand of rope. For me, the world streams out and in me, it dissolves as a bracelet melts into gold, a pot crumbles into clay, a wave subsides into water. I adore myself, how wonderful I am. I can never die. The whole world may perish from Brahman to a blade of grass, but I am still here. Indeed, how wonderful. I adore myself for I have taken form but I am still one. 
neither coming or going, yet I am still everywhere. How wonderful and how great my powers. For I am without form, yet till the end of time, I uphold the universe. Wonderful. For nothing is mine, yet it is all mine. Whatever is thought or spoken. I am not the knower, nor the known, nor the knowing. Shall I? There's a little oh, that's more. Good. That's in the same section? Yeah, yeah. There's another couple of couplets. Okay. These three are not real. They only seem to be. When I am not knows, for I am flawless. Two from one. This is the root of suffering. Only perceive that I am one without two. Pure awareness, pure joy. And all the world is false. I think I'll leave it. That's pretty much it. You know, so many people suffer with self-doubt self-criticism, suffer, suffer. They hate themselves, they hate what they've done, they hate who they think they are. But I'll tell you, I think everybody if they really knew themselves, would love themselves. Underneath all the loathing and doubt, these people really love themselves, but they don't know it because they're in their heads, in their emotions. I do love myself. It was an amazing experience to realize that. But when I love myself, I love all of you and everything because you're all me. That life force in me is in you. And I, whoever I am, whatever I am, love myself, I love life. I love seeing a puppy and a kitten playing, enjoying themselves. I love old people who have learned not to move around so much because it's difficult and they're more at peace than young people. I love myself and I love that life force in each of you. I welcome it, I worship it. I bow to each of your feet and surrender because I love myself and I also love you. You are separate expressions of the same me. We're born with certain drives we develop a certain education, family relationships, and a psychology and a personhood as an individual. And then if we're lucky, we go give all of that up and turn our attention inward to being the self, not just finding the self, but being the self. 
Because being the self means you felt into the self. Finding yourself means you're searching with the visual sense. You're looking, you're objectifying. And it's hard to find the self by objectifying. Instead, you have to subjectify, which is to laugh, laugh, which is to, what's the word I'm looking for? Relax into yourself. And what is that? Yeah, you can say lots of different things. Almost anything is part of you. You can relax into that light inside of yourself. You can relax into your body sense. You can relax into your breath. You can relax into the totality of your consciousness. All of these things are you. And all bring an increased sense of righteousness, that everything is right, not the pounding sense of righteousness that you're right, but everything is right. Everything is effortless. Everything is light. A light touch. Your lover touching your hand. Just the fingertips over the top of your hand. And you've never felt anything more delicious in your life than having someone you love deeply touch you so gently. And all of life begins to feel like that. Happiness, just by knowing the self. Self is not an object, but it's all the objects too that you feel, experience, see, the whole world. But now you see it from the inside, not the outside. That's why they say the world disappears because you're no longer in the world of objects, but in the world of subjectivity. Your focus is there. Day after day, week after week, month after month, your focus is on the self. Soon you become like Ramana, sticking to the floor of the temple, not moving covered by ants, spiders, you don't care because you're in the self. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but it's meant as a sense of humor. Ah. By the way, Enrique, every time I see where you live, I'm jealous or envious, I should say. It's so beautiful there. Does anybody have any questions? Any statements? Any problems? Any criticism? Any complaints? Good. Kenji, how are you? Um, is uh, <clears throat> when you say emptiness, is emptiness like emptiness, this emptiness? Say, say that again. When you say emptiness, is emptiness like this space, like emptiness in front of us, so we are all like in? It's all around us. Have you ever been in a planetarium where they have the stars and the, but it's very dark and they have the stars and the planets on the ceiling 
Um, no, but I'm aware of that. Have you ever been in the desert or a mountain at night when I the stars? Have been, I've been grown up in a place where we didn't have power in the nights and we used to sleep outside on the out actually outside with the topless and I used to watch the sky. Yes, with the stars. And okay, now imagine that emptiness, that same emptiness you felt then in you and around you all of the time. You experience it all of the time that all objects, all happenings, all experiences are taking place within that emptiness that is also you because your consciousness extends to the end of the emptiness and it's all you, it's all you, it's all you. You're as large as your universe is large. That's what Robert discovered when he was 14 and his consciousness kept expanding until it filled the cosmos. I won't go so far, that's sort of poetic. It comes and expands to the limits of what you're conscious of while you're sitting in the moment, which might be an airplane overhead or the sound of the wind in the trees, but there's emptiness everywhere. And it's filled by the objects which are like holographs. They, their solidity is put to lie by the emptiness which contains them and permeates them. But you're not the emptiness because emptiness is just an experience. You're the one that experiences emptiness, but you're not a thing. You're not a thing. You're not a watcher or anything like that. It's different. It's different and it's hard to explain that awareness as you are, what it is, except to say it's awareness. It's a functioning, not an object. Would you put it in any different way, Mary? No. That's, I, that, that's how I feel. It's like an, just an intelligent awareness. I don't know what else I would add to that. Yours is an intelligent one. Mine's kind well, of dumb. Kind of dumb. Okay. Mark, how do you experience yourself in the emptiness? I experience my sense of presence being extending and being in communication with everything. I know that sounds very lofty and stuff, but that's how I feel. Um, unbounded, unlimited, totally satisfied, totally fulfilled, totally confident and at peace. And there is no seeking because I'm at the place where I'm supposed to be and I, 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 I'm, I'm there. So I think most people here would be very pleased to reach, I, again, I don't wanna boast, but I think they'd be very, very happy to experience what I am right now as, a, as am I. But uh, my whole conflict is trying to communicate helpful steps to others that are trying to reach it. So that's an ongoing. That is my difficulty is helping others to get to where I'm at or closer. But uh, that's a whole nother kettle of fish. Get, um, get them all a cup of Starbucks coffee. I mean, really make something available to people. Uh, Maxi, how do you experience yourself? 
or maybe Max is just pretending to be there. Enrique, how do you experience yourself? Ian, how do you experience yourself? I contemplated what you said and the, the word that came up for me was belonging. <coughs> and that I belong to everything and everything belongs to me. Yeah. Raju. Uh, I can't say experienced uh, self yet, but what I have been experiencing which is that as the journey started, there was rigidity in physicality, the mental construct, the emotional and the energy, but slowly, you know, the relaxation that you have been talking about has been taking that experience deeper and deeper. So, so it's like from this rigidity, you become more, uh, not fragile, but in a way that you're starting to perceive a little better. And then as the relaxation deepens, and there is something very stable, which is like untouched, it's like you're moving from the rigidity to this attribute uh, less an untouched kind of a being that uh, is probably where that sense of freedom appears to be. Um, and if I'm expressing that right, but it is you're moving from that uh, tightness to a sense of freedom. And at the beginning of the class, you talked about how do you touch that freedom by doing nothing? But it is not like really not doing, it is just that a feeling of, uh, maybe not even a feeling, it, it is you're finding that um, state of equilibrium where you feel complete. And I think to sum up my experience of feeling that uh, experiencing self is from the tightness to the feeling of um, uh, freedom, even though I'm not doing anything and it doesn't matter where I am just right there, you're just being and not thinking or doing or anything, just being. So at this point, that is what my experience is. I'm trying to share with you the joy of being and doing nothing. Because on one level, we can just describe it in mundane terms like freedom or inactivity. But when we learn to descend into, observe and feel the self and then to be the self, which comes through surrender, the joy you get is so fantastic to have the whole world in your hands, so to speak the shopkeeper and owner of everything. except the Trump White House, but that'll be mine soon.
you know, I'm increasingly perplexed by what's going on in the world. I have no idea what's going on. I've even started reading books about all this QAnon and the Trump phenomena and race, white racism, but you know, racism has very little to do with what Trump is doing and QAnon is doing. This thing about alternative realities. I think it's a kind of madness where words dominate experience and you can make up words with all kinds of realities. But even the one I live in is not real. And they want me to live in their reality, which is less than real, unreal. It's really, really unreal. Does anybody know what's going on in the world now? I have no idea. Good. Glad I'm not alone. But I do know what's happening in myself. I just relax into my inner experience. And I find no object, no thing I can point to that's the subject. The subject seems to be everywhere, coextensive with the object. There's no division. And the happiness is everywhere. There's no division. Even Kali dying is something I accept. And yet at the same time, it too breaks my heart. And that's acceptable too. It's just another experience within the fabric that is me that extends everywhere. A four dimensional thing with space and time. And it's all me. It's all me. You can come and live there with me if you want. You just have to dive into yourself. Be quiet. Dive into yourself. Feel yourself. Sink into your heart and your gut into your butt and legs, hands and arms, shoulders. Feel your body. Feel the space in the body. Then reach outside of yourself and feel the space around you. Darkness filled with light becoming illuminated. Some people feel energy still coursing throughout their bodies, the chi. Some go deeper than chi and kundalini into the sense of being. Others see the whole thing as one, one same thing, including the outer world is the same as the inner. Everything is you. Everything is me. And we share that. When you realize that for yourself, you're enlightened. At least that's what it means to me that that awful term enlightenment, which has fooled so many people into believing so many things. 
or awakened. You can say it's real freedom, not freedom of activity, but it's freedom to do nothing. The freedom to feel happiness inside, to feel complete, to feel yourself as the whole universe and to feel happy, always happy, except when the external world comes and bites you in the ass. And for a time, you have to pay more attention to what it's doing because it's trying to work its magic and its maya on you to get you involved in its manipulations. Maya does try to get you, but you're Maya also. So you just accept her. Jay, what does it feel like you when you read the Gita for us all? What experience um, do you have? It's, it's exquisite. I mean, as I said the other day, I, I, I ran through material which I, I sort of felt like I was in a bog and, and there was a viscosity to it that was just slowing me down. The words were, they didn't point toward anything. They had no in, intent. And uh, I, I, as I said, I, at the end of it, I needed a sugar fix and I needed to go to the Ashtavakra Gita because it is so exquisite. It just simply, it, it's transporting. It, I, I can't, I try to come as close to feeling the words um, because, but there, there's an elegance and a simplicity in the words themselves that, that there's it's such a powerhouse it's such a pure awareness it's such it's such an exquisite trip um and i hope i know there's many more couplets to share and i love that you allowed me to read it because um and today you you've done it again you exploded me but if i had to look to two persons in the sangha non-verbally exquisite powerhouse channeling. I looked at Ian and to Cassie because they explode me on a way that just simply goes beyond words. It is ineffable, it is indescribable. And they wear grace and joy and bliss in a way that just, I just am transfixed. So I love you both as I, as I love you all. But the Gita does that and Ed, you do that. and the whole entire joy of being here and the deep love that is requited to me. And if I can give back, because this is grace. I love you all. The peace of silence. when the mind doesn't move. When the mind is silent and you're dumb as a rock. You know, it's really hard to allow yourself to become dumb as a rock. You feel something's wrong. Like you're sleeping when you're still awake and you feel unprotected because the mind isn't there to explain everything to you or express everything to you, then you really feel stupid. And it's hard to feel stupid, to allow yourself to feel stupid because we're so mind dominated. Now 
Then again, we have some people like Stevie that are naturally stupid as a rock. For them, it comes easily, but they're rare. Cassie, what say you? Yes. <laughs> is, it is it difficult for you to feel stupid as a rock? Yes. <laughs> I'm always watching out just in case something might come and get me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's, it's to relax. I am getting more relaxed and I, I, I haven't been able to just sink in and just relax most of my life and I'm just starting to get to that place. Um, as I go to sleep, just really finding that beautiful song thinking oh it's exquisite so, yeah. but yeah not dumb as a rock i think i've got something Those that practice a lot of meditation, where they just sink into themselves, you can call it emptiness meditation or doing nothing meditation, develop a lot of power from the concentration. The Zen. Japanese Zen call it Joriki. And like I've told you a thousand times, when I was on Mount Baldi, I watched people change. By the third day, late in the third day, they've usually relaxed their body and can sit comfortably. The first two days are hell. The third day is acutely hell, and then the sudden relaxation. And then the power begins to manifest itself. You feel such stillness even when moving. There can be six inches of snow that you're walking through and you don't need your shoes or sandals anymore. You don't even feel the coldness as something to be avoided. You're very comfortable walking in deep snow in a six degree temperature Fahrenheit. And it even dropped to minus six or seven at times and you didn't feel it. The Zendo is only heated the first 15 minutes in the day and the windows were made out of paper. And you can see your breath all day long, but you felt very comfortable because Joriki filled you with power of focus and concentration. By the time Sashin ended on the seventh day, 
you felt like you could pull a tree out of the ground or telephone pole or move a boulder that weighed 10 tons. You're on top of the world. The power of meditation. Some, of course, were never able to find that sweet spot of relaxation. And they suffered miserably most through most of the session. They all lasted seven days. But they persisted because they felt a benefit anyway. I don't think I've met, I've meditated since maybe 1985 because I felt it all the time or all the time when I thought about it. And now I feel it all the time, no matter what I'm doing. I feel the emptiness. I used to feel the energies of the Kundalini and the Chi energies. But after 10 years or so, they died away. And I went lower into the self, to the life force itself. And that's when I became deliriously happy or simply delirious. Do you know what I mean, Cassie? Mary, you know what I mean. Are you deliriously happy? And yet you can still bake a cake if you wanted to. Can you be deliriously happy when you're baking the cake? People that are watching this, you think I'm nuts, don't you? I know Stevie thinks I'm nuts. Sometimes I think I'm nuts. Michael, anything to say today? PJ. I... I feel really good. I was um, in a like space, feeling that space thing. Then I I thought that's not that's not it, and I was doing something. I was I was focusing on something that's not right, and I left it. And now, when you answered again. I felt it's a good thing to just focus on that and, and it gives a sense of peace too. Thank you. Love you, Yves. Ditto. Annie, what do you think of our satsang? I'm marinating in it. <laughs> I'm 
perspiring on the palms of my hands as I'm coming into my body to respond to your question. And uh, joyously exuberant, seeing the reflection of radiating joy on my skin and beaming out my eyeballs. <laughs> Do you feel emptiness? And completion. But do you feel emptiness? A hundred percent. Describe it for me, please. Uh, like floating in a bathtub, but not knowing that you're floating in a bathtub. Floating in the, in the womb of oneness in reality like before you have um, been born into the world and floating within the sky as vast as the widest view of humanity through what seems to be eyeballs, but there's no eyeballs. <laughs> there's just uh, eternity. You, your emptiness is very complicated. I don't know. I'm just using words. They're not mine. <laughs> Is there something the matter with your doggy? No, uh, she's cuddling. Oh, close to the couch. She's made a adhesion with the couch. <laughs> she's in a little ball in the womb of the couch, the lap of the couch. Stevie, what are you feeling right now? Lots and lots of things. Uh, yeah. There's a uh, feeling of limitless uh, emptiness, but there's also some limitless thing that is filling in. And then uh, inside of my body is more concentrated, dense feeling than outside. Um, my, my body just feels very small right now, which is wonderful because it feels kind of like a, um, in servitude, you know, uh, I, I love when my body feels small because then I feel huge <laughs> somehow. And then my body can just worship and and bow and and uh, and all of this stuff that's happening. There's so many things happening right now in my experience, but uh, I also don't really feel um, I, at the moment, I don't feel in it. I feel kind of um, 
beyond it or something, just seeing it there. <laughs> it's weird. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. Your world is very complicated. <laughs> Not really. I was going to, I was going to answer. Um, <laughs> I was, <laughs> was going to answer like this. Woo! Uh, but then I figured I should probably use English and try to, uh, <laughs> to make sense in some ways. <laughs> I, I like the woo answer. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, Selena, how are you? Um, 